Hey there, YouTubers. All right, so in this video, I'm going to attempt to explain the differences between the 400 and 500 series motherboards for 10th and 11th gen CPUs. Now, as most of you are aware, I own quite a few 400 series motherboards. I've just recently got in a couple of 500 series motherboards, and we will continue to get more in. Um, we've got 11th gen Intel CPUs that have been shipped out to us, and hopefully, you know, we'll begin testing those. Uh, I may have to update some notes in this video if I find after the fact that there are errors, but I do believe between the research I've done, what I already know, and what I've seen, you know, in some other videos, uh, this should be relatively accurate. All right, let's start not necessarily at the very bottom, but uh, one of the ones that's at the bottom, the B460B460M motherboard. Okay. So, originally it looked like this was going to support 10th and 11th gen CPUs. That changed. It is now 10th gen only, okay? You see on the left there, not supported. An official note from Intel that I put in here, motherboards based on Intel B460 or H410 chipsets are not compatible with 11th gen Intel core processors. Boo, right? Now, what do you get with your 10th gen? PCIe 3.0, okay, so if you install a PCIe 4.0 GPO, runs at PCIe 3.0, right? Gen 3 M.2, um, you know, so if you run a Gen 3 M.2 in there, it's going to run like that, right? You install a Gen 4 M.2, which is the, the faster ones, it's going to run like Gen 3, all right, just so you know. Max RAM speeds that you're going to achieve with the B460. Assuming that you have RAM that can hit these speeds, okay? Because if you have, there's RAM out there that has a base speed of 2133, 2400, 2666, okay? You're not going to achieve 2933 megahertz for i7, i9. That is either for RAM that is, is fixed at 2933 or that can run faster than that and is compatible with the motherboard, okay? So, most of the time, I'll put 3,000 megahertz RAM in there. It'll be compatible, but it will run only at 2933 with an i7 or an i9, all right? For the 2666 megahertz, you are, um, that is for Celeron, Pentium, i3, and i5, okay? That RAM will not run any faster. You could also put RAM that's fixed at 2133, 2400 in there, all right? But it will not run any faster than those stated speeds. Sizes of these motherboards, mini ITX, micro ATX, ATX, all right? There's a lot of other features about the B460, but uh, for gaming and most of the stuff we care about on this channel, these are the primary things we're gonna talk about. B560, B560M. All right, now it gets a little more interesting, even for tension. So this motherboard is, these motherboards are compatible with 10th and 11th gen. And one of the ones that I have is the ASRock HDV, or excuse me, B560M HDV. So what have I noticed from experimenting with the 10th gen CPU that's in there? Right now I have a i3-10100 installed, okay? And what have I noticed? Well, uh, PCIe 4.0 times 16 runs like PCIe 3.0 by 16, okay? So that's all you're gonna get, okay? If you install a PCIe 4.0 GPU, it's gonna run like PCIe 3.0. Gen 4 M.2 does not function, okay? So what they refer to with on ASRock, they call it a hyperdrive. If you install a, um, m.2 that has the operating system on it uh, it may not even boot up okay if it boots up the bios it may not even recognize that you've got a m.2 installed as has been the case with me so that leaves you hopefully with one gen 3 or more on your motherboard that you can use all right so if we install a gen 4 m.2 into the gen Three, it's going to run like a Gen 3 M.2, okay? RAM speed up to 4,800 megahertz. Now, 
if I have an 11th gen CPU, which I will have shortly, uh, that functionality is going to turn back on for PCIe 4.0. So I'll be able to not only put in a PCIe 3.0 GPU, but a 4.0, and the 4.0 will run like 4.0. For a Gen 4 M.2, I'll be able to put something like an EVO 980 Pro into the M.2, uh, the hyperdrive one, and get those faster speeds, okay? Ram speed, uh, they're stating, you know, higher speeds than 10th Gen. Same thing, same sizes. Now, H410, this one is seriously disappointing uh, quite honestly I don't know why anybody would even buy this one at this point even though I have two of them now uh, what do you get here PCIe 3.0 uh, once again if you put a 4.0 GPU in there it's gonna run like 3.0 gen 3 m.2 once again install a gen 4 m.2 it's gonna run like gen 3 same max RAM speeds as the b460 had for a tension once again uh, the note there motherboards based on Intel b460 or h410 chipsets are not compatible with 11 gen so you will not be able to use 11 gen motherboard sizes uh, Ethernet should be the same for the h510 I didn't note it okay h510 now this one supports 10th and 11th however it's you're not really getting anything out of having tension. So everything I said about H410 for attention is the same, okay? And then, oh, by the way, this does not allow RAM overclocking. So um, for the tension. Now, 11 gen, what do you get? There is a PCIe 4.0 times 16 slot for a graphics card, okay? And of course, 4.0 GPO will run at PCIe 4.0, a 3.0 GPO will run at 3.0. There is not a spot for a Gen 4 M.2, um, just Gen 3, so the Ultra Drive. So once again, you install Gen 4 in there, it's gonna run like Gen 3. RAM speed up to 3200 megahertz, okay? For whatever reason, they did not allow this one to go way beyond 3200, but this is still a huge improvement over H410. So if you're out shopping for H410, you might as well look at the H510s and, and forget the H410. There's, there's no reason to buy H410. H470. Now, here's one of those places where uh, there's some stuff out there that you know is questionable, but uh, we shall see in the future. This may be a spot where, you know, an update may be needed in the slide, but we'll find out. So if you bought an H470 like I did, and you had 10th gen, you know uh, it's PCI 3.0. You install a 4.0 GPO, it's going to run at PCI 3.0. Gen 3 M.2, and I don't know that any of the H470s had a uh, future Gen 4 M.2. Uh, none of the ones that I bought did. So this could be one of those places where, hey, a little asterisk, you know. Um, I didn't look at too many H470s to see if any of them had it. The ones I did didn't. So now RAM speed, uh, same thing as the B460 and the H410, okay. You'll see here, and I should have put this on the right side, but uh, you may need to update it. Uh, while you have the tension in. So maybe it belongs on that side, but Intel recommends that you update the BIOS on your Intel 400 series chipset based systems for compatibility with upcoming 11th gen Intel or desktop processors. Okay, so we jump over to 11th side, 11th gen side. If you did not do that, you may not get 11th gen that works. Okay, so uh, much of, this, of the same information is what was shown on the other side except for you can run an 11th gen chip. Now, RAM speed, I don't believe that is any faster. Uh, however, I have not been able to fail to actually test it yet. So hence why that's in red. Could not find any information online about it. Couldn't find any videos where people had done that yet. Uh, all that should happen here shortly as the 11th gen chips go out. 
because you know most people are hey if i've got an 11 gen uh, i7 11 700k they're sticking in in a z590 or z490 or whatever you know they're not even messing with this motherboard um and i haven't seen anybody that's gotten the lock processors early so all right now we go to a motherboard that i've got i believe i've got five or six of these um between z490 z490 m's tension so i put this note um says the same thing on both sides unlock 10th or 11th gen cpu allows overclocking in it okay pcie 3.0 by 16 okay once again 4.0 gpo it's gonna run like 3.0 future gen 4 m.2 does not function okay so if you install an EVO 980 Pro in there, it doesn't function. It doesn't recognize it. Gen 3 M.2, okay, so you're stuck with those. A lot of the Z490s have the future one, and they'll have two Gen 3s, okay? Ramp speed, 4,800 megahertz, and I put a plus sign there because potentially it might be 5,000, depending on which board you bought. 11 Gen CPU. Uh, once again, it's going to allow unlock 10th or 11th gen CPUs overclocking. Okay, so we've put a uh, what do we put in there? i7 10700K into our um, excuse me, we haven't done that yet. In the future, we're going to do that. Okay, very soon. All right, so future gen 4 M.2 may function as gen 4, remains to be tested. We will, uh, you know, see about that aspect, right? Because I'm very curious about that, if that's going to actually work. Uh, and we will definitely try that out. Gen 3 M.2s, okay. And, you know, basically everything else stayed the same as the other side. Now, RAM speed might be a little, a little hotter with the 11 Gen in there. Sizes, mini ITX, micro ATX, ATX, EATX, Ethernet. Um, there you go. A little faster Ethernet with these guys. Let's get into the Z590. So we got one of these in 10th gen. What were the improvements for 10th gen, folks? There really was no difference. Um, no difference at all between how it performed in a Z490 motherboard. Okay. Same things. PCI 4.0. Runs like 3.0. Gen 4 M.2 does not function. So you put the EVO 980 Pro in there, hoping it will boot up. Does not boot, okay? Um, or it doesn't recognize it. One of those two things will happen. However, if you use one of the Gen 3 M.2s, um, that M, that Gen 4 is going to run like a Gen 3. RAM speeds, 4800 megahertz plus. Now jump over to 11th Gen. Um, and for both of these, the statement's true. Unlock 10th or 11th gen CPU allows overclocking. 11 gen allows you to actually have PCIe 4.0. So now I can use those graphics cards to their fullest extent. The gen 4 M.2 will work with 11 gen. Gen, and you also, you know, have the gen 3 M.2 RAM speed. Uh, as you've seen, on uh, some of my other videos, this is actually uh, stated low here. Uh, you will see, I believe, up to 5,300 megahertz now. Uh, depend on what motherboard. Part of the problem is, you know, depend on which motherboard you look at, you may see different values. And I believe that I saw with the Z590 Gaming X that it could handle 5,333 megahertz, okay? Sizes, uh, same stuff. Now, some of these supposedly support five gigabyte and 10 gigabyte ethernet, if you, for whatever reason, have that. And there you go, folks. That's all I had. Thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.